Hey everyone, so it's August 15th. I'm just going to do a quick update and I apologize in advance. My neighbor dogs, dogs, is, they've been absolutely fucking relentless this morning. Alright, as you can see, June Gloom is basically back. It's uh, fucking August. Uh, apparently, uh, La Nina is coming back off the coast of Indonesia, Eastern Ages, and uh, makes absolutely no sense why. Uh, I just don't get it why cooling of the ocean over that end fucks up the weather in California. Um, it's one of the reasons why I would actually love to get out of California. Pretty much uh, fed up trying to grow uh, vegetables. Well, not fed up, but it's just it's just frustrating. It's very frustrating. Okay. So you can see you got a lot of aromas. Been picking a lot. Almost every day I come out and there's new aromas ready to be picked. Um, I've given away a lot. I've taken a lot to work. My employ, um, my fellow employees like them. Uh, more importantly, my boss likes them, and also sent some care packages with my girlfriend to her job uh, to share the tomatoes. Um, so yeah, a lot of tomatoes coming in. Uh, as I mentioned before, my romas do not have blight. So you can see this is perfectly green all the way down to the bottom. Um, my aromas are pretty good as well. Uh, well, the aromas, are, yeah, they don't have blight, and so does the, the big boys. These also were not affected by blight, but my heirlooms were. So there's an heirloom right there, heirloom right there. You pretty much they kind of stand out, you know. The ones that have blight are heirlooms. So. Um, I will be removing these next week. As you can see, there aren't any more new tomatoes. As soon as these ripen up here, um, I'm just going to go ahead and remove these two plants. And also, I'm going to go ahead and remove the cherry. And once these manzanos are finished ripening up, which I would say <clears throat> at most a week, two weeks at most. Now, <clears throat> if you ever find yourself in a predicament where you want to get your your fall crop in but your tomatoes are not ripened yet uh, one suggestion is you can go ahead and take a shovel and you just cut around the base so here's the base of the tomato plant so what you want to do is just slice down all the way around what that's going to do is just going to sever the roots so the plant will stay you know upright because you're only going to do about you know two three inches away so and that will sever the roots and make the t remaining tomatoes ripen up um, that should only take about a week after cutting the roots. So, if these tomatoes are still trying to ripen closer to September 15th, when I plan to do my fall garden, I will go ahead and stick the shovel in, sever the roots, and allow them to ripen over a week of time. Whatever's remaining on there, I'll just remove, and any super green ones, I will finish the ripening process with a ripening uh, banana in a paper bag so apparently the tomato gives off certain kind of gases or chemical creates an atmosphere within a paper bag while it's ripening and it will help ripen any other vegetable or fruit that you put in there well any other fruit that you have alongside of it okay so here's some more bell peppers that's kind of a crazy looking guy looks like a little cup and another bell there's a good sized bell right there. Uh, this one is actually a Caribbean chili. As you can see, there's a lot of uh, flowers. I've, you know, come to terms that I always get my chilies later in the season, usually right before fall, and they usually all ripen throughout the fall. So there's a lot of chilies down there. Chili. Those looking good. Time is doing great. It's a little flowery, but. Is that right? The basil, still happy. Uh, the Fresno chilies, I've actually picked a few of these. Uh, they turned yellow, and now they're all starting to turn red, which is cool. They're actually really good. And here's another bell pepper. And my chilies, my super chilies that I'm going to pickle. Um, they're looking really good. There's a couple. One's got a little sunburnt, and my Greek basil, still doing good. 
Cayennes. I'm still waiting for these puppies to turn red. Nice and bright red. I'll say a couple more. So, it's probably not until the fall for those puppies. Um, the habanero that hasn't produced anything. I mean, it has lots of flowers on it. A lot of buds. Oh, there's one right there. Awesome. So, this is finally picking up. Um, cherry... Uh, cherry peppers. There's a lot of peppers. Not ripe yet, though. And a green bell. Which is actually ready for picking. And as you can see, this is not staked. It has a nice thick stock. It's very healthy. So let's give that one a little bit more time. And I wanted to show you my Cherokee Purple. This is one of the last few that are uh, growing. So it's a nice size. There's only a couple more. See, now there's one right there, and one right there, and there's two right there. Yeah, that was quite a few. This one so far has only yielded about 10 tomatoes, but they're all been very fat and juicy and very tasty. So, quality over quantity yeah, seems to fit. Okay, basil, I mean, rosemary, sage, grapes. Grapes are doing well. Um, now next year, once all the leaves die off, I will not cut these canes because these are the canes that will produce fruit the following year. Once these canes produce fruit, then I will remove them the following year. And the canes that produce, that are grown, that grow in between uh, these canes fruiting and the new canes, the old ones will be removed and the new ones will be allowed to fill in for the following year's crop. So, I need to come up with a system of identifying which canes are from which year so I'll know which ones to prune at the end of that season. Down here, I started using this new stuff. It's pretty cool, I like it. It's a cedar mulch. It's very earthy, very foresty. When you open the bag, it has a very strong scent. Just absolutely awesome. Smells real fresh. Okay. The green beans, the pole bean, Kentucky blues. You can see they're completely wrapping around the pole. If we're lucky enough and get a nice month of decent weather, these will start producing right away. Um, the zucchini is still doing pretty well. This is a summer squash. And uh, if uh, history proves to be right, we should have a nice summer during the fall to finish those, to finish those up. Uh, the cucumber, this one was supposed to have populated, created uh, the fruit within 45 days, and it hasn't. But it's all right. It's growing well. Okay, my Eureka lemon is doing pretty good. Just picked off one of these little lemons. As you can see, it's slightly disformed. That means it needs more water. So I'm starting to give uh, a good soaking every few days. Jalapenos are still coming in strong. Nice. That's a good looking jalapeno. Uh, the habanero I planted three weeks ago, as you can see, there's a lot of habaneros. This thing is just littered with the puppies. It's awesome. Here's another Caribbean chili. This one has, is also littered with chilies. Same with this one and another habanero. Um, so I'm pretty happy with what I got going right now. Um, strawberries. As you can see, there are no more blossoms. That was the end of it. There are still strawberries here to be picked. I gotta get to these probably today because if I let them sit another day on the bush, they're just gonna rot. Bugs gonna get them. And they're gonna be inedible. So, so next week I will. 
go ahead and I'll remove every single crown. So this is, let's see, so crown is basically this. So this is a baby crown from a sprout. What this one I'm going to do is it's going to slice it there, remove the remove this and this will be a new strawberry plant. The crown this is coming from one plant. So as your strawberries you know, trellis out or spread out each one of those on that stem will turn into its own brand new strawberry plant. Okay um, so what I'm going to do for this fall, I already ordered some seeds from uh, seedtrust.com. Um, they have organic seeds. None of them are, you know, genetically altered or there's no science involved. It's original strains that from plants that you know developed and evolved over time on their own. So. Uh, what I'm going to plant this year is a uh, celery, celery, Chinese celery. It's called uh, Can Sai. Uh, carrots, if you believe. Um, carrots, if you're going to do it in the winter, fall, you need to just use a lot of mulch to keep the ground warm. Um, and that was that's a uh, carnival clown. Um, I'm also going to do two types of endive. One, it's, um, it's Pala Rosa Tardiva. Uh, yeah, it's a little hard to say. Okay, and also some arugula, uh, some oriental mustard. Uh, it's oriental mustard, it's uh, called um, konya, and then another one called tatsai. So, two different types of uh, mustard greens. Uh, leeks, I'm going to do a King Richard leeks, and I'm also going to do a large American flag leeks. Uh, winter squash. This is a baby blue hubbard, a uh, winter squash again, a spaghetti squash, and a black zucchini. Um, just kind of thought it was an interesting color. Okay. Uh, I'm also going to do a Swiss chard, just a rainbow mix, and turnips, uh, white egg. Um, now, if you do check out the site, it's uh, seedtrust.com. They sell quantities, their seeds, and the quantities of three each I mean, each batch is going to be at least 200 seeds uh, one of them's up to 700 seeds I'm like and they're still cheap you know it's like two bucks a package so yeah I'm gonna have plenty of seeds to give away and uh, as soon as they arrive I will go ahead and put them in their seed germinating trays put them in the seed germinating window and start the sprouting process um, the schedule is September 5th. I will have them outside in the greenhouse or inside of the greenhouse tent uh, just to get, you know, a little bit more sun, transition more into the outdoors. Alright, that was my update. I try to keep it short, but yeah. Alright, peace.